Any reef aquarium hobbyist that attempts a stony coral dominated aquarium should be very familiar with the calcium and alkalinity levels of their salt water. We covered calcium in our last video, so this video will primarily focus on alkalinity. So what is alkalinity? Alkalinity is a little bit more abstract than calcium. It's not a particular ion, but rather the interaction of several that affect the buffering capacity of salt water. Buffering capacity can be thought of as the amount of acid required to lower the pH of salt water to the point that bicarbonate turns into carbonic acid. It does sound overly technical, but in layman's terms, higher alkalinity levels equate to a greater chemical stability in our reef tanks. The more acid required to cause that chemical change, the more resistant the solution is, generally speaking, to chemical change, which is highly desirable when trying to grow sensitive organisms like coral. In addition to chemical stability, alkalinity is important for stony coral growth because corals and other organisms use up alkalinity over time. It's measured in degree of carbonate hardness, or DKH for short, and natural seawater has a DKH of around eight or nine. Like with any chemical parameter, you never know if you need to be supplementing it if you don't actively test for it. So I'll quickly demonstrate how to do an alkalinity test. This particular test kit is made by Salifert. It's a very popular brand and it's the one that I'm most familiar with. The Salifert alkalinity test is a basic titration which is a test of buffering capacity. It's made up of two reagents. The first is a bluish stain, and the second reagent is what we'll be adding drop by drop to perform the titration. The idea is, once the buffering capacity of the sample is exceeded, the blue stain will quickly change to a pink color. The amount of that second reagent needed to change the color from blue to pink will determine the DKH of the salt water sample. Let's start by getting four milliliters of tank water for our sample. Next, let's add the first reagent, which is this inky chemical. The test calls for four drops. Also, be careful not to get any on your clothing because it can permanently stain. The second reagent is a clear liquid that we will draw up using our one ml syringe. The key here is to draw the plunger back until it lines up with the 1.0 mark. Again, don't keep pulling back until the water in the syringe lines up with that 1.0 mark. It's going to give you a very different reading. Usually when the plunger lines up with the 1.0 mark, the fluid lines up with the 8.5 mark, or close to it. This is fine because the pink plastic tip holds about 0.2 milliliters, bringing the total back up to that desired 1.0 milliliters. When doing the titration, add the reagent drop by drop until you see a color change. We want to see the exact amount of reagent that it takes. A good titration will show an immediate change once the buffering capacity is exceeded. Literally, one drop will instantly change the color of the solution. I try to give the sample container a flick or two between drops just to mix it in. Okay, and there's our color change. Now, to determine what the alkalinity level is, take a look at the syringe and see that the end of the stopper is now at the 0.55 ml mark. So we've put in 0.45 milliliters into the sample before the color change. Referring to the instructions, we can see that the reading of 0.55 means that the DKH reading is somewhere between 6.7 and 7.0. That's a little low, considering that natural seawater is a bit over 8.0. Okay, a quick disclaimer here. Before going off and trying to raise the alkalinity levels, consider the appearance of your corals. If they're doing wonderfully, it may be better to simply maintain the current levels rather than attempting to change them and chase basically some arbitrary numbers. Also, consider that these test kits are not perfect, sometimes they do expire, 
And also, sometimes your technique is not perfect either and you could just be doing the test kit wrong. A worst case scenario is that the water chemistry is actually fine, and that a poorly conducted test encourage you to fix something that really wasn't broken in the first place. Having said that, there are several ways to boost calcium and alkalinity, such as additional water changes, uh, dosing calcwasser, dosing two-part additives, and devices such as calcium reactors that help maintain this, uh, this water chemistry. If those solutions aren't quite working out, there's one other thing to look at, which is the magnesium level in the water. Magnesium can affect the balance of calcium and alkalinity, and that will be the subject of part three in our chemistry series. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you're already subscribed, hit that bell right by the subscription button to make sure that you get notified when I post new videos. Thanks again, guys. Happy reefing.